Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Dave with Alum House Sound. Today we're going to be diving into the X32 Edit program. Stick around. Alright, so most of you guys are using the X32 or the M32 line of consoles and they have various different platform sizes from uh, different levels of faders down to no faders that you only mix on the iPad. Many of you also have used the iPad uh, application to interface with this, uh, with this console or maybe you've got your band on stage like I do that uses their phones and the M32Q app to interface with the console to mix their in-ear monitors which are run on buses. Now regardless, all of us can benefit from the X32 software. Today we're going to dive into the X32 software to set up a basic live stream with a post fader mix on X32 edit. So let's dive into the software and see what we get. Alright, so we're looking here at X32 Edit. Now this piece of software has complete control over the X32 when it's connected either through a Cat5 cable over a network connection or just plugging it directly into the back of the console in the remote control section with a Cat5 right to your computer. Now you will need to make sure that your Wi-Fi is turned off so that your computer looks for the uh, IP address of the console. And I am currently not set up, but you would come into the setup area and once you're connected, you would hit rescan and it could look for and identify a console here. It would bring up a picture in this gray box of what the console would look like and you can hit connect and you can even choose whether you take the settings from the actual console and push them to this, this computer or if you take things that you've preset on this computer and send it to the console. Now, typically speaking, uh, you're going to be taking whatever's at the console and then displaying it here, and that way you don't overwrite any settings that you've got on the console. So here we go. Let's get started. Uh, a quick run through of what we've got on this setup. This is just uh, one of my clients that I've worked with here. Uh, they actually run a studio, and so they've got all of their drums here and then a bunch of blank channels that are blue. And then on the next layer, they've got all of their vocals here. Uh, then they've got some instruments, keys, and then a couple other blank channels as well. You can see on the right that the DCAs are not being used. And then on the effects rack here, they do have a PC input, and then they have some effects returns that are turned up to various levels. And here, uh, from here over, you can see uh, they're running four reverbs, a, a Vox reverb, a drum reverb, a... Um, uh, a reverb for everybody and then even a delay as well. So let's talk about how we set this up and how this software interacts similar to the console. Now on the right hand side here on the bottom right you can see we've got an option to select any of our buses. Let's take a look at their buses actually on the left hand side. And so when we hit the bus matrix you can see that he is set up for uh, a couple in-ear monitors and then he has some, some groups here. He's got a vocal group or a vox group. He's got a drum group and notice that these are in stereo. Left and right are paired and so if we move one fader we move both faders. All right. So we've got a vocal group, a drum group, a band group. We've got a blank pair here and then we have our buses again that we just saw not too long ago. And then here on the right hand side you can see matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are not being used currently. So we've got some available outputs that we could use if we wanted to. So how do we build a setup here? So how do we build a setup here? Just like on the full console, the left hand side here, typically speaking, are going to be inputs. And the right hand side over here are going to be outputs. So if I come back over, make sure we're back on some of our input channels. On the right hand side, see that main left right currently is highlighted. If we click on bus one, well this now becomes like on the right hand side of the console hitting bus one and then hitting sends on fader. Notice that these fader colors change and we can raise and lower any, uh, any fader and they are different, if I put this one here, 
it's different than when I go back to the main left right. Notice that these are all in, uh, in different positions. So if I click on bus one, we now go back to that mix. So this is how we would build our mix. And what we want to do first is pick a bus that we can set up our live stream on. So when I go to bus, I do identify that we've got two, uh, two buses left here, which is great. We're gonna click on one. And then up here in the top left, we can click on stereo link. It says, do you really wanna do it? We say yes. And so we're gonna go ahead and bring these up to zero. Now the good thing is that I can just type in zero and it goes right there. I don't have to guess at where the fader is gonna be. Okay, so we've done that. Now in this one too, you can right click uh, or option click here and we can call this stream left and we're gonna change the color. And then we will do this and call this stream right. And so now we have them labeled and that's gonna be easy for us to identify. Also notice that these colors map to the colors that are here around on the right hand side. So our 11 and 12 are now red. That makes it just a little easier to identify what you're clicking on. All right, well let's go back to our main faders here and we are going to select on the right bus 11. To get an even match of what's coming out in our house, let's first look at our house mix. All right, let's adjust this. Uh, this, this looks pretty standard for, for a, uh, a mix, but let's just make this a bit more drastic here. Overheads, let's say we don't need that much hi-hat in our mix, and our overheads typically are pretty loud. Let's go to our band. Okay, vocals, let's make a little mix of this here, and, and this, will, this will make more sense here in just a second. All right, Jerry, we need the bass, maybe a little less keys. All right. Let's say that this is our front of house mix, and we like how this sounds in the house. We always have to set our house first, okay? So we've come in now, we've set our house mix, and let's go ahead and hit bus 11. And now we can start to build the live stream mix going into this bus. Well, if I just wanna copy everything, then what I can do is put this fader to zero. When I move this fader to zero, what it's going to do is take a 100% copy of whatever this is. Now this just happens to be at zero as well, but even when we get over to this Tom mic, when we move that fader to zero, it's going to sound where this fader is down low. Now we're gonna do that by setting our bus to post fader. We'll do that in just a second, but let's finish building our mix. The easiest thing to do is just hit zero and go across here and I will fast forward through this part. All right, so we got that done pretty quick. These shortcuts on the computer do help us go a little quicker. Uh, obviously you're not able to just use your hands and pull all the faders up like you would on a console, but it's still a pretty quick endeavor. All right, the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and set up this bus to be a post fader mix. The next thing that we need to do is go ahead and set up this bus to be a post fader mix, which allows the live stream then to follow whatever this mix looks like. And if we make a change, if we pull Jerry's electric guitar down, it's gonna bring it down in our live stream as well. So we don't have to pull it down here, then jump over to the bus and pull it down in the bus. That would be annoying. So All right, so this is a little different than the console. The way we do this is we actually, to do a global change, we can't do it right on the, the bus setup. We're not able to select bus here and then make a change in this area to change whether it's pre-fader, post-fader, anything like that. We do a global change by going up into the routing, which is up here in the top right. We pull up our routing screen, and then we're gonna select out, one through 16, and we get this matrix look here. And what we're gonna do is find bus 11, see how it says stream left, and we come over to the right, and look, it's purple. Now, you've gotta use these color codes down here, but this is post fader. So if you right click or command click, then you get this little selector window, and this is where you could select pre-fader, 
uh, if you're setting up in your monitors, let's say, uh, you can actually see that that some of these in your monitors um, are set up post fader, which is is kind of puzzling to me. But we're not here to talk about that. We're going to look at these. So stream left and right, we want to set these up as post fader. So we'll make that change. All right. And now that's going to change everything globally for that bus. So we can close this window out. We're going to come back to the routing in just a second. But we can close that out. And another thing that we can look at is if we select an input, let's go back to our kick drum here. If we select an input and just above the channel strip, we have sends. If we click on sends, we will see that the live stream here, see how this falls into post fader. We could change this to be pre fader if we wanted to. And then we could change the amount, the mix that's going into it. That's just another way that we can make a change, but we want to leave that at post fader. And then we're going to move on. All right, so another thing that we want to think about here is adjusting our mix. Now, let's say that this mix here on our main left and right, look to the right, we're selected on mains. Our main left and right mix, let's say that this is fine, but let's say in our stream we need more symbols. So we're going to come to bus 11. All right, and now we can turn the symbols up just a little bit. We could also come over here and say we need a little bit more bass. We can make that change. You can make some alterations here. Let's pull the vocals down some. You can make alterations over here to the actual mix going out to your live stream without impacting the front of house mix. Now do keep in mind, this is a ratio. And so we're, we've turned this input down by five and a half decibels compared to and let's just look, this is vocal one, compared to what it's in the front of house mix. So you'll need to set your front of house and then you can come in and set your stream mix here. Now we need to route this stream mix somewhere. So we're gonna do that in the routing area. Hey, if you've made it this far, pause for a minute, do me a favor, hit the like button and the subscribe button. That helps everybody out. Back to the content. Now we need to route this stream mix somewhere. So we're going to do that in the routing area. So routing, then we'll come to this input section and we'll see that all of our inputs right now are set as local inputs. And that may work for you. Maybe yours are set up with AES 50. Maybe they're right here. Uh, I'm not sure what your setup is, but for this example, we're leaving them as local. But what we want to do is come to the card output. Now, when we look at card output, right now our locals are set to go out the card. And that would be good if you're doing a multi track setup where you wanted all of your inputs that are local 1 to 32 to be recorded out of your card 1 to 32. What we need to do is get our live stream mix bus to go out USB 1 and 2. So to do that, we're actually going to come over to the custom user out tab over here on the far right. We're going to follow output 1 through 8 all the way over here and we're going to click on outs. And what we want to do is click on out 9 to 16 because that's where our mix bus is. And what we can do is hit on bus 11 and bus 12. So let's just talk about this for one second. What this says is if we select the custom user out and that's user out one through eight, what we've done is we've mapped user output one to be sourced by mix bus 11. That's our live stream. We've also sourced output two to be coming from mix bus 12. And it does tell you that those are post fader. That's great. So now what we need to do is come back over to card. And now we can come over all the way to the right. Now look, we don't even see it. So we have to scroll over to the right 
user output, now when we select user output one through eight in this little setup here, this is going to send whatever we have in one through eight out our USB channel. Now one last thing that we can do to really help your live stream setup before we leave this view is we can set up an effect. Let's go to effects one through five. And here I like to use uh, effects eight, but we're gonna set a precision limiter. You can click on type and you can run through all of these different effects that they have, which is a great array of effects. We're gonna choose precision limiter and then we can source this to mix bus 11 and mix bus 12. And then we can hit effects, which is going to insert it. And now we can click on the picture and we can make changes to this limiter to be able to get our overall sound up. We can control the top end and we've got a great broadcast opportunity that's getting ready to happen. Now we do want to make sure that this is inserted in the right place. So the last thing we need to do, click on bus on the left, select your desired bus. We're going to come up to config. And what we can do is we can see that the precision limiter is inserted at the end. See where this is? If we hit pre, it would put it before our EQ and our compressor. We want this to be the last thing in our chain. So we hit post or deselect pre, and this allows it to go through the EQ, then the compressor, then our limiter. We can check that by going to the channel strip, and we'll see that we have EQ, compression, and then our inserted effect, which is our limiter. All right, well, we made it. We've got a mix bus pair set up that's routed with a post fader mix going out our USB cable. It's headed into our streaming software so the world can hear what you are doing in your venue. Well, if you like this content, you like this video and you're learning something, hit the like button and subscribe button and feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm always answering questions in the comment section. I'm always checking out for what you guys need help with. And if you'd like to see more videos on this X32 edit software, feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well. That'll help me know what you guys need. Well, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.